Hello everyone, um, screencast on ethnic differences in education, we're looking at the internal factors this week. <clears throat> this is our learning focus, we're going to look at what the internal factors are, what, the, um, what impact they might have on uh, students. Um, do students themselves have any role to play in um, the educational achievement differences? And as ever, apply, analyse, evaluate theory uh, in class. Okay, so um, Gilborn and Udall believe that the, there's definitely internal factors are in play when it comes to educational uh, differences in, uh, between ethnicities and achievement. Um, they found that um, the education system has to have a role to play. And an example that they, ca they gave and came up with was um, some uh, African Caribbean children who were very high achievers when they started primary school. And by the time we came through to the GCSE results, they were the lowest achievers. Uh, Gilborn and Udall believe it can't all be down to things outside of class. The influence within school has to be great if these are the kind of um, results that we are getting. Uh, from this, sociologists have identified five, car five key internal factors um, which we will look at individually now. <coughs> First one is the labelling and teacher racism. So this is an interactionalist uh, ideology, so thinking Howard Beck are et al. And they're interested in face-to-face -face, um, interactions between students and teachers. And they believe that stu uh, teachers focus very different uh, labels upon different ethnic groups. And this could be suggested that comes from the habitus that they have and their ideal student um, in their own minds. Um, because children from ethnic groups don't um, fall within this uh, characteristics that are being outlined as ideal. Um, then they attach negative labels, different labels, to these ethnic groups. Now, two ethnic groups that have been researched are black and Asian. Uh, Gilborn um, believed that teachers were very quick to discipline black children, um, for even for doing things um, that other children were doing as well, that black children would be um, disciplined a lot quicker. Uh, Gilborn and Udall together uh, carried out some research which um, highlighted that teachers have racialized expectations <coughs> and that they expect um, black boys particularly to um, be more disruptive, be more um, negative towards school and this leads to conflict because a teacher will discipline this child a lot faster because they have these preconceived ideas and then the student reacts to these uh, conflicts and this discipline and uh, it goes around in a cycle. Gilborn and Udall also found that pupils felt um, that their ability was very much underestimated. So it doesn't matter how clever or intelligent they were, because of the colour of their skin or their ethnicity, um, it, it didn't really make any difference. The, the, the teachers still treat them in a certain way. So the conclusion that Gilborn and Udall bring from this is that um, it, educational achievements down to racial stereotypes, uh, nothing to do with outside of school or anything like that. It's about the teacher's opinion on that child. These are uh, backed up somewhat by um, Bourne, who um, found that there was a higher exclusion rate among black um, boys particularly, and this was seen because um, teachers seen that uh, black boys were a threat. And Foster found that um, regardless of ability, black children were placed in lower sets um, rather than the sets of other children who have the same ability. Now looking at Asian, um, Wright believes that teachers hold an ethnocentric view of uh, education and wider society. Um, this idea that British culture is the best type of culture and all other cultures are inferior um, to, to that culture. Um, pupils also found, uh, felt isolated by teachers. So uh, Wright was finding that a lot of um, teachers were uh, mispronouncing uh, Asian students' names or dismissing their culture or their beliefs. This is seen as more of a, a problem rather than a threat, and, but it's easy to ignore. So Asian students were ignored a lot, where black students were um, actually targeted and disciplined. Wright suggests that this could lead to uh, marginalization, especially with girls, because um, the uh, cultural norms of Western white girls, uh, particularly in Britain, um, compared to the cultural norms of uh, girls from Asian families are completely different. And because the norm doesn't fit within what the teacher sees as norm, then this marginalises the girls. So the second thing is pupil responses and subcultures. So this is the idea of do we act positively or negative to these 
labels that are placed on us by teachers. Um, Fuller found that um, it's you know not always a negative thing. Um, a group of Year 11 black girls um, that Fuller studied found that they were very high achievers, and what what happened was they channeled their anger into determination and this idea of proving their teacher on. Um, they also rejected the need for approval, so not actually caring whether or not the teacher thought positively or not. It's about actually doing well in at school. And they conformed to the schoolwork, but they rejected other norms, um, such as rules and, and dress code and things like that. Uh, this is support from Mackingall, as it suggests there. Um, so that what we can draw from this, I suppose, is that label doesn't always um, lead to a negative self-fulfilling prophecy, and that you know you can use these kind of labels as a determining factor that you're going to do well in school. And also the fact that you can actually succeed without conforming to the rooms and the norms of the, the school. Just picking up on the idea a bit further, Mertz believes that um, students are discouraged by teachers um, based on their ethnicity and this is in terms of restricted opportunities to do extracurricular activities and also possibly through advice and guidance that they give them in terms of what kind of courses they could be uh, trying to achieve. So maybe that um, the courses that ethnic minority group students are pushed towards a menial uh, working class kind of courses. Murta identifies three different types of teacher racism based on all of this. Um, so some teachers are colour blind so they might not actually be racist but they, they don't challenge racist behaviour. Then we have the liberal chauvinists um, who have low expectations of um, this, the students and also a, a negative view of cultural deprivation that comes with ethnic groups. And then we've got the overtly racist who actively go out of their way to discriminate against ethnic minority groups because they think they are superior and that the uh, ethnic groups are inferior. And Mirza believes that the, this leads to avoidance tactics, um, trying to avoid teachers, trying to avoid school, but obviously doing this leads to a disadvantage and Mirza believes that one of the reasons why um, kids don't do very well at school from ethnic minority groups is because they are trying to avoid the racism within the school. Sewell um, looked at how boys respond particularly to um, racist behaviour and um, boys were very much, uh, black boys was, were seen as having to have this macho image and uh, they were seen as being rebellious and anti-school and anti-authority as well and Sewell believes that there's four different types of responses um, from boys uh, within the school and the, the four are on there so we've got rebels, those who you know reject all of the the rules and the goals, maybe the troublemakers, um, they have very much uh, a negative attitude towards schoolwork and anyone who does schoolwork, anyone who's conforming. Um, they go along a lot of posturing about their sexual exploits and how many fights they've got into and things like that. They're very visible but they're quite a small minority group. Then we have the opposite, we have the conformists which are the, generally the largest group. They, they accept the goals and they, they came to succeed um, they don't necessarily hang around with um, people of the same ethnic group as friends, um, but the, but then and they have very uh, large anxiety over being stereotyped the same as as people from the same ethnic group who are part of the rebel group. Then we have the retreatists, which are a very small minority, and they just totally isolate and disconnect themselves from school completely. And the innovators, who are pro-education but anti-school, so similar to what we talked about before with the um, black girls who uh, fuller studied. Um, they look at success but not approval, they don't care about whether or not they are approved by the school or by the teachers, it's all about success. They want to have credibility um, with the rebels perhaps, but without actually being rebellious, so they might act as though they don't care, but they, they do actually do care. So an evaluation of uh, labelling and pupil responses is that um, label very much blames the teachers for the stereotypes rather than the background, so it's very much an internal, it doesn't take into consideration anything outside of school. Um, it's, it, it, there's a danger that it ignores wider racism in society by looking at just the teacher. So it could be racism within educational policies, within the government, it could be any kind of institutions. And also the idea that pupils automatically fall into a victim of self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, we know that that isn't necessarily the case. Uh, we have examples of people who have um, achieved as a result of uh, negative labelling. So there's an assumption that 
pupils automatically um, have a, a negative reaction and they are going to underachieve. Next thing we're going to look at is this idea of the ethnocentric curriculum. And this is the idea that um, our attitudes and our policies within education uh, give a priority to a certain culture. So that would be in Trina and Williams and also in David's eyes that the British curriculum uh, gets priority um, to white culture. Um, when we study particularly in history as Ball uh, has, has found that we look at um, the British Empire and how they exploited the world and it very much promotes how good England was and is and ignores diversity, we don't learn about other diverse cultures. This is changing to a certain extent, I don't think it's as bad as it was say back in the 90s or the 80s when these studies were carried out um, but there is this idea that we, we ignore diversity and we promote England. Um, Code uh, also says that this has a direct effect as it, it lowers self-esteem so uh, if we look at um, ideas about the British Empire and there's a lot of slavery and things like that and it shows black, pe black uh, people and also uh, other ethnic groups in a, a derogatory and a negative light and, and this can actually lower self-esteem and lead to failure. However Stone argues that you know black children don't have low self-esteem so that wouldn't necessarily be the case. Institutional racism um, kind of links in closely with this idea of the ethnocentric uh, curriculum. And Trina Williams believes that you know the, any racism actually is beyond just the teacher and it's the, the wider um, government and educational policies that are to, to blame. So the ethnocentric curriculum for a, is an example of institutional racism. Um, so we don't um, learn about ethnic languages, we don't permit ethnic languages to be spoken in schools and also the portrayal of black slaves as I said. Hatcher believes that those who are a part of governing bodies fail to deal with any racism and they are not addressing the, uh, the needs of these groups of students so they aren't um, helping them develop their languages or, or learn about their cultures. They may have been born in this country but it doesn't mean that they can't learn about their cultures within school. Hatcher also found that there was little um, communication between schools and parents so if a parent ever really raised any issues or problems with the school or wanted to find out a little bit about how their child was doing then they rarely heard anything back and if they did hear anything back it was normally negative very rarely positive praise passed on to um, te parents from teachers of um, ethnic minority children Okay, um, selection and segregation. So there's this idea that um, within education, within schools and also the, the wider education that the segregation taking place and Gilborn believes this is down to marketization, puts ethnic minority groups at a disadvantage because as we've seen last week when we look at the statistics, particularly black students um, are very low in the achievement um, tables. So this, um, through marketization, this would mean schools have the op opportunity to select um, or not select certain students. Uh, in America, Moore and Davenport carried out a, a study and came up with this idea um, that selection procedures lead to segregation. So m minorities weren't allowed or not getting into better schools, and this could be down to the fact of the application process. If English isn't your first language, and also you don't have a, a, a decent standard of education yourself, as a parent, you're not going to be able to fill out the application form, or you're going to be uh, frustrated by it, so you're not actually going to um, carry that out. Also the learners past is taken into consideration so any issues that they had in the past will be looked at. In the UK similar findings from the Commission for Racial Equality. Uh, evaluation of this is Gervitz uh, who believes that segregation is actually not just down to school choosing but also the parents choice. Gervitz found that a lot of um, parents will send their children to schools that have a, a high population of similar ethnic groups to their own son or daughter. Um, so it's not segregation through uh, force but also through choice sometimes. And finally um, there's a link between ethnicity, class and gender and Evans argues that we need to understand that it's not just ethnicity but also gender and class within ethnicities. Uh, Connolly uh, believes that masculinity is constructed very differently depending on ethnicities and this leads to how boys um, react, particularly boys, react differently to um, the way that teachers uh, treat them. So black boys are seen as very masculine and very boyish, so they're given boyish activities, encouraged to do sport, and they're also punished. Where Asian boys are seen as more feminine and understanding, and they're protected from these bullies and excluded from any masculine activities and not punished in the same way. 
Okay, that's everything for this week. I hope you have a lovely weekend. I will see you all next week. Um, special shout out to my Wednesday class this week. Bye bye.